Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, for today's video, we're going to be talking about this incident that happened down in uh, Florida between a Seminole County deputy and a, an Orlando City police officer. I'm sure that if you follow me, you're already well aware of what happened down there. Um, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now that we're going to be talking about it, um, I want to talk about some of the reaction to the video. And it's really... <laughs> really kind of surprised me, um, particularly from the law enforcement community. Um, I've had some conversations with some people who have posted some things that I disagree with. And at the end of the day, we actually agree pretty much on, you know, the outcome of this, uh, but they get really hung up on certain things. And I think that what they're doing is they're being disingenuous about some of the facts of the case. And I don't think that's something that really helps people on the flip side of that. Um, there's, there's some like non police officers and stuff that are saying some kind of silly things about this incident that are also not true and kind of stupid. Um, so I want to, what we're going to do is we're going to watch this video kind of in its entirety. Um, I'm just going to play it. It's only like a minute and I don't know, Almost, it's, it's about two minutes. Uh, let's put it that way. So I'm going to play the video for you and then I'm going to come back on the screen and we're going to start from the beginning and I'm going to walk you through everything that I know about this incident and then kind of give you my thoughts on it as we go. And hopefully I can do that in a clear and concise manner in a way that won't take too long. And uh, if I'm doing my job right, I'm going to get a lot of angry comments from a lot of people telling me that I'm an asshole and an idiot and that I am an embarrassment to the badge because that's what happens every time I make this kind of video. So for your ent entertainment, I am here. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll rewind the video. I'm going to get my face off the screen and let's take a look at what happened down in uh, Seminole County, Florida involving a Seminole County deputy and, an or and, and an Orlando police officer in uniform driving a marked police vehicle. Copy down that bumper. This one or this Yeah, one one zero seven zero. Pull over. You going to pull over? Please say a command. Pull over. Three one thirteen to three thirteen. What? Do you? I am going I, into I, work, my man. Why are you trying to pull me over as I'm going? Because you're work? going eighty and a forty-five. I am going into work. Okay, where are you going? What to does work it look for? like I am dressed for? I have. What no... does it look like I am dressed for? My name is Deputy Hilton, and they see your driver's license. No. Okay. Three one thirteen. Copy at ten fifty. Ten four. I got a city odd. Uh, Orlando PD taking off from a traffic stop. Uh, it's going to be X-ray Fox Rod 6207, XF 6207. All right, guys. So there you have it. Um, man, there's actually so much in that two minutes of video there. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through what's happening and I give, give you my opinions kind of as it is going and give you my thoughts on it. So here are the things that I've heard about this particular case, 
Um, I don't know a lot of people in Florida, but I have received some message from, messages from some and just read through some comments and stuff on social media. Um, this isn't something I have extensively researched and it's not something I'm going to extensively research. I just want to kind of give you my thoughts and opinion on what's going on here. So the little bit of background that I heard is that this uh, sheriff's deputy who works in Seminole County in this area, whatever, um, he heard that there was a police car that was um, driving really fast in on this road all of the time. And he set out to, I guess his explanation was that he wanted to catch the guy in the act and then stop him and have a talk with him saying, listen, we're getting a lot of complaints about your driving, blah, blah, blah. So he sits up on this road and basically um, set up a trap for him, was going to pull him over and we call it code two to code to him. Uh, my initial reaction when I saw it was, or when I heard that, I didn't have a huge problem with that. That was my initial reaction to that. My, my thoughts have changed on that and I'll explain that here in a moment. But just starting off, um, he knows that this guy is coming. He knows that the officer is coming. He knows that he does this every day or whatever day, um, however many days a week at this particular time. I don't know why he's facing the direction that the car is coming. Maybe he doesn't have rear facing radar. Um, I don't know, but I would have already had my car facing the proper direction before the car came down the road so that I could initiate a traffic stop. But regardless, so he, um, let's see if I can mess with my sound over here. He found him. Yeah, I can do that. Um, he, I'm going to turn the audio down on the video. So when it does come up, you're not going to hear it. Uh, so what he did is he did locate the car coming down the road. Uh, the car was doing what? Uh, the police cruiser was doing 80 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone, which if I do my maths, correct me, that's, that's 35 miles an hour over the speed limit. So what he did was he verified, yep, there is a city car that's driving down this road really fast every single day. These are the complaints that I've been getting. I'm going to go ahead and um, now that I have verified that this activity is true, I'm going to go stop him and I'm going to tell him to stop doing what he's doing. That is his thought process. Um, now we get into a situation where he's driving down a uh, two lane road with a double yellow. Um, and in, while he's driving, he is saying, Hey, I had to go over a hundred miles an hour to catch up to him. Oh, I got to turn my sound down because I can hear it in my ear. Um, so he's now we have a deputy that is driving hundred miles an hour down the same road that this officer was driving. Um, obviously breaking traffic laws and all this other stuff for a traffic violator. Uh, this is something that in the jurisdiction where I live would not be something I would be allowed to do. If, a if I was on a, a narrow two lane road like this with a double yellow and a car flew by me at that speed, I would not be allowed to activate my license sirens and try to catch up to it. Um, we're just going to, say that. So he catches up to the car. He says in the background, something like, this is that guy. Um, the guy stopped and went through the stop sign. And then here's the deputy, uh, simply flying through the stop sign. Um, that would be a policy violation. If you ask me, um, then he comes up to try to initiate a traffic stop. So the officer, um, I'm assuming that in his tiny little pea brain believed that this a uh, deputy was trying to get somewhere. So the officer pulls off to the side of the road and the deputy does not pass him. So he then continues to go apparently because in his mind, he's thinking there's no way somebody is trying to stop me. I am in a marked police car. Um, why would anybody try to stop me? That's what his thought process is at the time. And that's what we're going to see here in a hot second when the deputy gets up beside him, ends up pulling in front of him, telling him to stop. Now, I have a lot of thoughts on this particular thing. And this is kind of where I'm seeing a lot of uh, kind of silliness on both sides of of the equation here. Um, I've seen a lot of comments from the public saying, you know, good on this deputy for enforcing the law, um, not just letting this slide under the rug and blah, blah, blah. I also have seen a lot of comments from police officers saying, Hey, I'm the, I'm the dipshit deputy who 
pulls over marked police cars and not knowing what they're doing. I saw a guy last night who is like a, uh, he runs like a pro law enforcement um, Instagram page. I'm not going to call him out. But uh, he even said, you know, this deputy didn't know what this officer was doing. He could have been on his way to an emergency. Um, and I also heard from somebody who works in Florida. They said that this officer was on his way to a SWAT call out. Um, I can't verify that any of that information is correct, but that's what they were saying. Um, my response to that, which we'll get into, uh, I'll, I'll save that here for a moment because I want to talk about the deputy first and then the officer second. Um, so the deputy then pulls in front of this car, stops him and gets out and they have a conver confrontation. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of bad that can come of this. Uh, there's a lot of people that are cheering on the sheriff's deputy and that's, I don't think you should, I don't think you should be cheering on this sheriff's deputy. Um, I, I have thought about it, uh, in my life. I mean, there's, you have to think about times where you know what if you are put in a position where you're required to put your hands on and place under arrest an active police officer who is literally um working in the line of duty so you've got you're a cop they're a cop you're wearing body armor they're wearing body armor you have a gun and cuffs they have a gun and cuffs what's what would happen if you try to arrest that person. That person's like, no, you don't have the authority to arrest me. I'm not going to be arrested. Um, are you, you're putting yourself in a situation where you, you might be forced to kill another police officer or that police officer might try to kill you, um, over a traffic infraction. Um, that's not something I would advise that you do. The other thing is, this uh this deputy um he the the proper way to handle this kind of situation let me just put it that way um if i understand his 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 thought process if this if this is the honest to godness thought process that he was going through uh he was like you know what i heard that the city guy is driving 80 miles an hour down this backcountry road it's got the residents all pissed off they're saying that they almost hit their dog and you know whatever um i as a uh, senior deputy patrolman with a guy with a lot of years on the road. Um, I'm going to stop him and I'm going to, I'm going to inform him of the error of his ways. It doesn't need to go any further. Um, I'm going to stop him and have a talk to him. I understand that thought process, but at the same time, <laughs> um, trying to stop another officer who's in a marked unit, I can understand why that other officer might not be so willing to stop because this isn't something that happens. Um, I'm going to talk more about the officer here in a minute because he's, I'm not exactly a fan of his either. Um, but you have to, you have to re think about these things before you do them. Um, I would say that the initial thought process, uh, process of the deputy and everything, um, wasn't great, but he could have recovered from it. What I would do well, first of all, I wouldn't do this because I don't run radar. I don't have, <laughs> I'm not radar trained. I've never written a speeding ticket, but in a perfect world, what he would have done is he sat up on the road, watched this cruiser go flying by him at a certain rate of speed, knows that the guy is outside of his jurisdiction, uh, knows that he's probably not at work, knows that he's probably abusing his police cruiser and his authority and his position and all those other things. If you want to flip around and kick on your lights and sirens and try to stop the guy, okay, I, I guess I can accept that you wanted to give that a shot. The moment he takes off, you write down his bumper number and you, you call your chain of command, you call his chain of command, you start a shit show that way. You can show them the video, whatever, this all would have been hopefully handled. Um, and you don't put yourself in a situation where you're having an armed confrontation with another armed police officer. Like, what are you going to do? Are you going to go put your hands on him at that point? Um, no, like you didn't, you didn't solve anything by doing it the way you did. You could have just called it in, could have had made sure that your leadership followed up with their leadership. If they wanted to, they could have notified the media. Like all of these things still could have happened without you doing this. Um, 
think that's where I'm going to leave that part. <laughs> so here in a second is the confrontation with the officer. So he's, he's yelling at him, Hey, weren't you going to pull over? He's like, you know, so they get out of their cars. And that's where the, the officer here, he's like, he's like, Hey man, what are you doing? I forget what he called him. My guy. He's like, Hey, my guy, I'm going to work. What's it look like I'm doing? How am I dressed? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, there's, there's two, I, I'm going to say that these are, um, there's two idiots in this situation. Uh, the deputy made a lot of really idiotic and boneheaded decisions. The police officer equally. So, um, if not more so. Uh, I think that more of the more of the blame for this situation falls on him. Um, he's an idiot. He is a dumbass. Um, if you're on your way to work, that means you are not at work. Um, that means you can't do the things that you are doing. Uh, if you're driving through another jurisdiction at that rate of speed, there should be repercussions for that. Um, you're not... I, this gets thrown around a lot and it gets misused a lot, but it's like you, you're not above the law. Um, if you, if you, if you act in a manner that is a complete disregard for the law and without respect for any other people around you, you should face consequences for your actions. Um, this guy is acting as if he has the right and the authority just to do this. Um, if I can step back for a moment and just say, look, he is off duty. Okay. He's off duty driving his city owned vehicle, but let's say he was on duty or let's say he was en route to a SWAT call out. Um, let's take the SWAT call out, out of the equation for a moment. We'll get, we'll circle back to that. Uh, just like Jen Sucky. Um, when I am at work, and I need to get somewhere. I don't drive like that. Um, I worked, you know, for about a decade at, on night shift. Now I work on day shift at night. If I had to get to a call and it was really far away and it was a hot call, um, not a shooting, but, um, maybe it was a domestic violence that sounded like it could be bad or as a fight that sounded like it might go bad. Um, something that was like a really important call, even a burglar in progress, burglar in progress is probably a better example. Uh, cause often on burglar in progress calls, you, you run lights and sirens, and then when you get into the neighborhood where the, the burglar call is, you turn off your lights and sirens because you want to make a quiet approach so that the people don't run before you get there. You want them to run when you get there so you have a chance to catch them. Um, but often at night, there's nobody on the road. Um, there's a lot of the major streets in the area where I work are four-lane roads with turn lanes in the middle. Um, theoretically, I could drive... 70, 80, 90 miles an hour down those roads on the way to a hot call without my lights and sirens. And I would not see another motorist. Um, so, you know, the reason that you have your lights and sirens on is to tell other motorists, Hey, you need to get out of the way. I'm coming. Don't, don't turn onto this road, you know, whatever there are, there were times in the middle of the night that I would drive fast. I would drive way faster than the speed limit to get to a call when I was not running lights and sirens. Um, I can also tell you that that two lane road that he was just on, um, I would not have been going 80 miles an hour on that road, even if I knew that there were no other cars on the road. And if I was on duty on a hot call, probably even with lights and sirens, I probably would not have been going 80 miles an hour on that road, even when I was on duty. The fact that he's doing it while off duty is insane. Um, the other, now let's take for a moment, people are saying, well, he was on his way to a SWAT call out, or how do you know that this officer isn't on a call? If you're on a SWAT call out, or if you're on a call and you're driving that speed down a two lane road, you better have your damn lights and sirens on. Um, if I, if I was this deputy and I saw a police car driving towards me, at a very high rate of speed with his lights and sirens on, I would not have even flinched. Um, this, this whole thing would have been avoided if this officer was, had his lights and sirens on. 
but he wasn't driving with his lights and sirens on. He was going 35 miles an hour over the speed limit. Um, and he also passed a car on a double yellow line. So at that point, when you get out of the car, you've already been a dumbass up to this point. Um, you don't need to be continue to be a dumbass right now. Um, it's really difficult because I can't imagine a circumstance where I, where I would be pulled over in a marked police cruiser. Um, I've been pulled over while off duty in my personal car. Um, I've been pulled over while on duty in an unmarked car. Um, I, I was pulled over by a trooper on the way to a call when I was working plain clothes one night, you know, I was working patrol, but our, our plane cars often will respond to an area before marked units. So we can call people out. Um, because I can drive through and my, the car that I had fit into the neighborhood very well. And I can pull up and I can say, Hey, yeah, there's a, a male white with a red hoodie. He's got a gun. He's the one that's waving around. He just went into 784 South front street. Um, and then the officers can come up and they can go hit that house, you know, that kind of thing. I was driving really fast to one of those calls and a state trooper who was not on the freeway like he was supposed to be. He came into town to try to snipe people. Uh, he pulled me over. I pulled off to the side of the road immediately. I hung my badge out the window. He walked up to me. He saw my badge. He still approached my car. And I said, hey, bud, I'm on duty. I was on my way to a call. He put his head down. He goes, I'm sorry, dude, take off. And I took off. It's really that simple. Um, I was also, I was pulled over very recently. This was on Memorial Day. I was taking my family on vacation. Um, I got onto the freeway. I set my cruise control at a speed that I thought was reasonable. It was like 10 over. Um, and we're sailing down the road. This trooper pulls me over. Uh, he comes up behind me. You know, I, I wasn't really paying too close attention to the to troopers on the side of the road. I didn't think I, I was going at a speed that was unreasonable. Um, I looked up and I saw him come barreling towards me. So I went ahead and got over in the center lane because I was in the left lane. Um, then he activates his lights, started giggling, told my wife, hey, we're being pulled over, pulled off to the side of the road. A uh, trooper comes up, makes a passenger side approach. I got my wife, my two children with me. Um, I handed him my driver's license and my police ID because I was wearing gym shorts. And uh, I said, hey, bud, just to let you know, I'm a police officer. My gun and badge are right here next to me on the seat. This guy started trying to lecture me. <laughs> he was like, you know, you're, he's like, what would you do if I was in your jurisdiction and I was driving that speed? And I looked him dead in the eye and I said, I've never written a speeding ticket. I'm not qualified to write speeding tickets. I don't give a shit about people speeding. Uh, that being said, it also in my mind, which I didn't say out loud, I was like, dude, I wasn't going very fast, but I was treating him with respect. Um, cause I was in his world, you know, this is, this is what you do. You treat other law enforcement officers with respect. I don't work traffic. I don't write speeding tickets. I've never written a speeding ticket. I don't think I ever will write a speeding ticket. Um, I've given so many people warnings for driving incredibly fast. Like I remember one night, a couple years ago, I was standing on the side of a major road. We had just finished up a call and, uh, this car, I think it was like a, a Toyota Avalon comes flying down the road. It's probably doing 70 and a 40. Um, just hauling ass. I, I jumped in my cruiser. I went flying after this car. I didn't know if it was a stolen car. It was probably two 33 in the morning. It could have been stolen. They could have just shot somebody. You know, there's not a lot of reasons that people drive that fast at that time of night. The car, as soon as I turn on my lights and sirens, they turned, they pulled off the side of the road. I approached the vehicle. It was a little old lady. <laughs> she was, she lived way on the other side of town. And she said she was trying to get to the casino. She couldn't sleep. So she wanted to go do some gambling in the middle of the night. Um, I asked her why she wasn't on the freeway because you can drive that speed on the freeway. And she said, well, there's nobody on the road. I figured I would just drive on the road. Um, I don't know. She's like 74 years old, really nice, really sweet old lady. Um, I did not write her a ticket for one. I didn't have her speed locked. And I mean, I could have paced her cause I think I paced her at like 70 miles an hour. I didn't write a ticket. I just gave her a warning. I said, take care. Now let's reverse back to, I've got this trooper yelling at me saying, what would you do if I drove in your jurisdiction, that speed, blah, blah, blah. If 
I did see you driving what I thought was at an unreasonable speed and I pulled up on you and you're in your car with your wife and kids and you're obviously on your way to vacation. I would have given you a warning as well. Um, I give, <laughs> that's just, that's who I am. That's how I treat these things. But regardless of the fact that I thought he was being ridiculous, I treated him with respect. That's kind of the moral of the story. This officer here did not. Um, he acted the entire time like he was above the law, that he didn't have to, he, you know, he doesn't have to listen to you, peasant, and all that other stuff. Um, it's, it's completely unacceptable. If, if you need to drive fast, you can turn on your lights and sirens. If you're on your way to work, you're not on duty. Um, even if you are on duty, you shouldn't be driving that fast anyway. <sighs> there was something else I wanted to say. And I can't quite remember. Um, oh, the other thing I wanted to say was like any time that you're wearing that uniform and you're in your cruiser, you're representing your city. Um, you're representing all the other officers who have come before you, are going to come after you, and that are currently working. You want to carry yourself in a way that um, demands respect. You want the public to respect you and your fellow officers. The way he was driving, the way he was carrying himself is not one of, is, he wasn't carrying himself that way. That was not appropriate. Um, you know, the city that I work for has been throwing around this unbecoming conduct accusation. Basically, anybody, anytime somebody um, is found outside of policy, they're labeling that as unbecoming conduct. Um, that is not what unbecoming conduct is. It's supposed to be like serious misconduct. This guy, in my opinion, driving his marked police cruiser while he's off duty to and from work um, in the manner of which he is driving, that is unbecoming conduct. He's carrying himself in a way that is going to cause the public to have a negative view of the police department. That is exactly what unbecoming conduct is. I think I've gone in circles enough on this one. Um, at the end of the day... How can I button this up? So the first thing that happened was a deputy tried to pull a guy over um, or at least clocked him for speed. I don't have a problem with that. The next thing that happened is the deputy tried to pursue this guy. Um, I do have a problem with that. He should not have done that. He should have just called us into the chain of command and that would have been it. The other thing that happened is that this officer was a complete dumbass and a jackass and treated another law enforcement like shit, law enforcement officer like shit. I'm not going to support that either. Um, the officer in this case was, um, he was relieved of duty, uh, which is not like a suspension. It just means, uh, that you most likely had his badge and gun taken and he was put on some kind of restricted duty status. Like I made in the video before, he's probably sitting in headquarters answering stupid questions that people call in with. Um, he's doing that while the internal investigation and criminal investigation proceeds, because he was charged with like fleeing and eluding. Um, I don't remember if that was a, a felony or a misdemeanor charge. It doesn't really matter to me. The question now, I guess there's a lot of people calling for this officer to be, officer to be fired. And there's a lot of other people saying that, um, you know, he should just be punished and he should be able to keep his job. I actually kind of go back and forth on that one myself. Um, you know, we are all humans. We do make mistakes. He might be... When he's at work, he might be the best goddamn police officer that the world has ever seen. I don't know. I don't know anything about him. With his attitude, I find that hard to believe. But there are also, there are things that some people can do that they are particularly good at that make them an asset to their employer that, you know, might not carry over to all the other aspects of their life. So there's always a chance that he really is a, uh, a, a very valuable member of that police department and does some very good things and that a, a harsh punishment might be in order. Um, at the same time, if they were to fire him for this, I probably wouldn't lose any sleep over it because at the end of the day, he put himself in this situation. Um, if you don't want to be in a situation where you're driving your marked police cruiser off duty and you have a confrontation with another armed on duty officer in the form of this deputy, if you don't want to be put in that situation, don't drive like such a fucking jackass. I think that's all I have to say about this. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later.